Greetings and hello to this episode of Winemaking 101, the series where I answer the most commonly asked questions about winemaking at home in a condensed, compressed, concise manner. I want to try and take out the bamboozlement of making your booze. I like that word, bamboozlement. One area that a lot of people ask questions about is additives to wine. Can you make a chemical-free wine? What are the additives you need to add to a wine? You walk into your home brew shop, you'll see potions and powders and tablets and lotions and liquids, and the salesperson will say you need to have all of these things. Pectolase, Camden tablets, Irish moss, stabilizer, tannin, citric acid, tartic acid. You need to buy all of these before you even make your home brew. Really good sales pitch they have going on, isn't it? that you need all of these things, otherwise your homebrew is going to be ruined. It's not going to be stable. You need these sulfates to make it a bacteria-free zone. You need to buy, you need to spend money. Great campaign to party with your money. Do you need them? Controversial, I know. A lot of people say, yes, but I use it because just in case I need it. And there's only one of those from the shop that I buy and I use readily, and that is peptolase. Peptolase breaks down the peptic enzyme in a lot of fruits, such as rhubarb and apples. It helps your wine clear. If you don't use the peptolase, your wine will not clear very well, and it will be slightly hazy. You have a peptic haze to it. It's perfectly drinkable perfectly fine, perfectly safe. It just has a bit of a haze to it. It's not the end of the world if you don't want to use it. I'm going to say something very controversial about Camden tablets. I never use them. Camden tablets are a sulfate type tablet and this adds sulfates to your wine which kill bacteria. If you keep everything as sanitized as you can, I don't see the need for adding them. They don't help keep your wine longer I've kept wine for five, ten years, and it's perfectly drinkable. It hasn't turned bad, because the alcohol content in the wine is a natural preservative. Therefore, I don't see the need to add extra sulfates. In every wine, there is sulfates already, and combined with the alcohol, you don't really need to add more, unless you're careless with your food hygiene. And stabilising your wine as well. You don't need to buy a stabiliser if you're willing to allow time to stabilize the wine for you. Stabilizer is a chemical that would kill the yeast off, but if you balance the sugar and the yeast strain, you will kill the yeast by the alcohol content in the wine. If you feel that you need to kill off the yeast prematurely, this means you have not balanced out the sugar type and quantity to match your yeast strain. If you match the sugar and the yeast, you will end up with your desired result without having to stabilize your wine. Yes, it is a buffer. If you mess up on your proportions of sugar to the yeast type, the stabilizer will kill it for you and it's this buffer zone. So if you are new to making wine and you haven't yet mastered the art of working out these ratios, the sugar quantity and type to the yeast, feel free, use the stabilizer. It will be a buffer zone for you. And that's what a lot of these additives are. They are buffers against error. But in time, aim not to make these errors, therefore you don't need these buffers. Sweeteners as well. You can buy them from homebrew shops or add your own sugar to back sweeten the wine. But again, if you add the right amount of sugar and use the right type of yeast string, the wine's going to be plenty sweet enough to create a wine that you want to drink initially, formulate the recipe or find a recipe to make a wine you want to actually drink, instead of adding stuff at the end of the process to make that wine you don't really like a wine that you do like. If you want to make a sweet wine, set out with the intent of making a sweet wine. Don't wait until the end of the process to think, hmm, I've made a dry wine, don't like dry wine. I'm going to bastardize my dry wine and turn it into a sweet wine. I have one pot of Camden tablets, unopened, best before 2015, five years ago. So if anyone wants some Camden tablets that are out of date by five years, 
I'll send them to you if you want. Let me know down in the comments if you do. Do you add any of these additives to your wines? And if so, why? I'm always open to new ideas and new ways of doing things. So let me know down in the comments below. And why not check out this awesome playlist of tips and tricks about how to make awesome wine. And I'll see you all again really soon. Have fun now.